Hello, I am Dr. Vinita from Department of Public Administration, Usmani University, Hyderabad. Today, we are going to learn a new concept that is new public management. Now, coming to the objectives, the aim of this unit is to introduce you to the basic features of new public management. After going through this unit, you would be able to Trace the important features of evolution of public administration. Explain the major premises of new public management. Identify the major components of new public management. Estimate the utility of new public management to the developing countries. Now coming to the introduction part. Discussion on public administration have generally been concerned with efficiency and economy. The idea is to see that administration become result oriented and productive by spending least resources. Public administrationalists have been fascinated by Wilsonian search for a science of administration at the flag end of the 19th century. In the world of practice, remarkable changes took place as the governments in the West sought to adopt themselves to new technology, new social demands and keen competition. This led to a search for new paradigm of public administration, this that is new public administration, public choice theory, critical theory and new public management. In this unit, you are going to learn the basic concepts of new public management. Evolution. We look by principles of public administration in 1928 emphasized the managerial role of public administrator. Leonard D. White in his book, Introduction to the Study of Public Administration in 1929 desired that the study of administration should start from the base of management rather than the foundation of law. Business administration as the appropriate guiding model for government administration was also Waldo's advocacy in his The Administrative State in 1948. The term management is fully applicable to the public sector or not is a questionable assumption. In the past two decades, that is 1980s, the topic of public management has come forcefully into the agenda of those interested in governmental administration. Numerous books and articles have included the terms in their titles. There have also been many management improvement initiatives at various level of government, including effort to implement specific procedures or technologies and prestigious conferences and institutional reports on improving public management. Common to all these activities is the claim that the emphasis on public management is both original and highly significant for education research and practice in public administration and related fields. In the practicing world of administration, there have been growing concern about the efficiency and effectiveness of public agencies. 
there was strident criticism against the self aggrandizing and budget maximizing politician the size of the bureaucracy and the cost of administration came in for sharp criticism and the very effectiveness of government had been in question the crisis facing the western nation in the 1980s and the 1990s forced a search for a new management style with its focus on professional management on the basis of economic rationality the slogan was let the managers manage leave the managers free to achieve the governmental objectives as they see fit in the most cost effective manager coming to the reforms reform efforts in government have been a continuity process in every country in india the administrative reform commission that is from 1966 to 70 produced a series of reports concerning almost all the departments of the government of india every pay commission report in india carried with it many recommendations for changes in administration such as the railways the police and so on similarly in the united kingdom there have been many major attempts to bring about significant changes at different levels of public administration what is important to note is that these reform proposals had been discussed within the framework of traditional public administration the accountability of the civil service to the elected element within the overall accountability structure laid down in the parliamentary system of government was not in question there was general consciousness that public administration could be reformed effectively by a combination of strategic management structural organization and development of better personal management systems in the 80s things started changing rapidly the failure to control the economy in the developed west led to the rejection of old solutions of control from these small beginnings the erosion of traditional administration and the development of public management have developed at a remarkable pace and by 1990s have emerged as a global movement its foundation lie in redefining the role of government for example as an entrepreneurial rather than a facilitator and approaching macroeconomic policy via control of public spending now what is new public management the new concept of public management or new public management has been characterized as a new paradigm changing the way public administration has traditionally been looked at in public administration there has been numerous claims of a paradigm shift like for instance from bureaucratic to post bureaucratic or to entrepreneurial government the note worthy feature is that the national public management research conference at cyprus university september 1991 and conference of the commonwealth association for public administration and management held in canada august 1994 produced thoughtful views on new public management now what are the components of new public management the new public management is essentially a market based ideology characterized by the importation of ideas generated in private sector setting within public sector organization the core idea of new public management related to the delivery of high quality services 
that citizen value, the consumers are reconceptualized as active customers and not passive recipients. To achieve high quality standard of services, the managers need increased autonomy. For this, the shifting of operating responsibilities from the central department to the specific agencies. Organizational structures are being simplified and hierarchies flattened to create conditions for more positive and productive managerial leadership. Rigorous performance, measurement of individuals and organizations are made compulsory. Rewards including pay structures are based on fulfillment of performance targets. In the area of human resource management, recruitment policy is directed towards drawing allied benefits and constantly expositing them to skill improving training programs. Advocacy of receptiveness to competition and an open minded attitude about which purpose should be performed by the public sector as opposed to the private sector. According to most interpreters, new public management has common roots and combines two theories or visions of what administration is or should be, public choice theory and neo-Taylorism. Now the salient features, characterizing it as a new paradigm of administration, new public management advocates the following shifts of emphasis in the way public sector is organized and managed. First, the traditional output oriented administration is replaced by the process oriented administration with emphasis on performance indicators, evaluations and performance related pay and quality improvement. Second, the customer replaces the citizen and the production line of public administration is broken down into individual pieces for contracting out or privatization. Third, major emphasis is on cost cutting rather than spending the administrative motto is to do more and better with less of the same. Fourth, structurally clusters rather than the pyramids as the preferred model for the design of the administrative system autonomous agencies being linked to the parent department on the basis of contract. Fifth, a dichotomy between core policy activities and adaptive operational services replacing traditional planning and hierarchical execution and decisions. Sixth, the purposes of ownership seen as efficient management rather than position. Seventh, on the financial side, budgeting in terms of simple input output qualities replaced by accrual accounting and all public services are considered for privatization. If their commercial viability may be sustained at less cost in the private sector. Eighth, all in all, the basic recommendation for the shift of general emphasis from policy to management with full cost consciousness before making any decisions. Now new public management as neo-Taylorism. The theoretical root of new public management is hidden in a kind of neo-Taylorism. The difference between the two theoretical bases of new public management that is public choice and neo-Taylorism is the public choice focuses on the relationship between internal and external organization. Whereas, neo-Taylorism is concerned with the internal organization of the bureaucracy. The cause of bad management according to neo-Taylorism lies within the administration itself. 
things go wrong in public administration because the cost of producing the public services is not known. There is lack of personal responsibility among administrators and the individual administrators play safe rather than slow initiative. Public organizations are geared to self-maintenance and routine service to the community through initiative imagination and adaptation is never the motto. The politicians join the administrators in maintaining status quo rather than bringing change. The results of neo Taylorism for transforming the classical model of public administration are many, but the basic advocacy is for introducing the managerial methods and techniques of the private sector into the public sector. More particularly, the following suggestions have been made by the neo Taylorist. First, application of performance evaluation techniques to measure actual achievements against preset targets. Second, assigning personal responsibility for each step in the performance of the production process. Third, for rewarding achievements and punishing underperformance or error introduction of individual rather than collective incentives. And fourth, following the private sector model of production imposing increased control by means of economic and financial information with the intention of providing a costing of almost everything produced in the public sector. Now, Entrepreneurial Government. The book Reinventing Government by Osborne and Gabler has come out within yet another prescription of what they call entrepreneurial government. An elaborate case has been made out to transform the bureaucratic government into an entrepreneurial one. Their prescription is not abolishing government but reinventing it. A government in the version should be adaptable, responsive, efficient and effective. Only then such a government will be capable of producing quality goods and services and be responsive to customers. It will be led by persuasion and incentives, empower clients and above all the entrepreneurial. Opson and Gabler suggested the following 10 point program for attaining entrepreneurial government. E.g. promotes competition between diverse providers of goods and services. Second, it empowers citizens by pushing control out of bureaucracy. Third, the measure of performance of the agencies focuses particularly on outcome not inputs. Fourth, it is driven by the missions not by the rules and regulations. Fifth, it redefines the clients as customers and offers them choices. Sixth, it prevents problems rather than cure them after they blow out. Seventh, it puts the energy into earning money, not simply spending it. Eighth, it decentralizes authority, embracing participatory management. Ninth, it prefers market mechanism to bureaucratic mechanism. Tenth, it focuses not simply on providing public services but on catalyzing all sectors that is public, private and voluntary into action to solve community problems. These are fairly clear cut straightforward identification marks of a type of government which the new inventors call entrepreneurial as the authors argue convincingly. Used almost as a checklist, the 10 principles offer a powerful conceptual tool. 
One can run any public organization or system or any of the society's problem through the list and the process will suggest a radically different approach from that which government would traditionally take. This is a checklist, ultimate value, the power to unleash new ways of thinking and acting. Although the characteristics features are being bandied about as empirically derived, these are more accurately preferred qualities than actual attributes. In a way, these prescriptions are rather simplistic and mechanical and are reminiscent of old time postcard type reductionism of vastly complex governmental operations. Reinventing government immediately caught the attention of anti-bureaucracy campaigners and the publication was accorded a warm welcome. Heralding as it were the birth of a new form of public management with considerable caution, the practical world of governance responded to this new paradigm. Change in the following manner. First, improving public management through performance, measurement and evaluation. Second, reducing budgets. Third, cutting the size of government. Fourth, selective privatization of public enterprises. Fifth, contracting out in selective areas. As Cadden has summed up the following situation, all blame the dead hand of bureaucracy, especially the poor performance of public bureaucracies. Now, intellectual response. Although there has been raging turmoil in the practical world of administration, the responses from the Western and developing countries have not been similar. In the Western world, the reaction are a mixed bag. One view has been that by its very nature, public administration is moving slowly and carefully in disposition. Public management is unique, which is not realized by the market sponsors. Its distinctive purpose is to support and develop collective life by choosing goods and services essential to the community as a whole. Establishing collective efficiency and constituting the social and political rules and purposes which make society possible. Public domain has the dual task of making collective choice and encouraging the politic sorry encouraging the politics of participation. Management in the public domain has to support both citizenship and government. What is needed is public service orientation, closeness to customers, decentralization and networking of public agencies. The recent development in public management that has been ruefully remarked have been sponsored by business schools and self-appointed think tank who have poor understanding of the role of government in society. This sounds like reopening the old debate between government administration and business administration. The battle line is drawn between the uniqueness school and the generic school. Whatever be the outcome of the debate, there are clear evidence of greater exchanges between public and private administration and of a ready acceptance of change in public administration structure, function and style of operation. At least in the developed countries, the size of government is shrinking by selective pruning of functions and through a process of contracting out. The public servant is appearing more in management role, shedding the former procedure oriented legalistic maintenance role that seems out of date now, yet the public aspect is one that is considered and not negotiable. The sphere of public governance has some unique 
distinguishing features like constitutional framework, fundamental rights of citizen, judicial review, legislative surveillance and accountability to different organs of government and the citizens. It has therefore been rightly pointed out that one particular problem is that the field of public administration appears to be a weak institutional bias for generic public management approach to governance. Implications for developing countries. This paradigm shift in public administration analysis in the developed West has its ripple effect on the third world as well. In the post-colonial third world, radical socio-economic transformation within as short a time span as possible has been the basic agenda item of governments in a situation of relative absence of a socially responsible private sector. Also, there has been a general skepticism about the role and efficacy of an essential control-oriented people avoiding and rule-bound colonial bureaucracy. Realizing creative human energy through speedy and wide-ranging transformation of an inherited, inegalitarian and iniquitous socio-economic setup has been duly acknowledged as a political question and not really an administrative one. Development administration, all said and done, had been first world's handiwork posing as a dynamic change agent. What it ultimately did was to perpetuate the stranglehold of the influential and the powerful. The current theory of state minimalism is just another name for recolonization. As the third world states are being compelled to follow the dictates of the international funding agencies and problematic in the proper perspective. The new public management was basically influenced by a combination of economic issues resulting in reduced financial resources of governments. Managerial rethink is a necessity to optimize scare resources, use and find alternative ways of delivering public services by developing a new synergy between the public and private sectors. The broad objectives of these reforms have been shift emphasis from developing plans to developing to keen strategic areas, to shift emphasis from inward looking system to development partnerships, the emphasis on outcome and outputs rather than inputs and to shift emphasis towards managing diversity within unified public service. New public management has exposed the overprotected and dominated bureaucracy models of management which if carefully adopted can bring about improvement in traditional public administration. The criticism on the new public management paradigm is that the first world managers who are interested in market mechanism to export their goods to the third world developed this model. First one, what is new public management and what are its components? Second, explain the salient features of new public management. Third, discuss Osborne and Gabler view on entrepreneurial government. <laughs>